So you want to make soft and delicious flatbreads that will be perfect for sandwiches, require absolutely no kneading without any special equipment and are simple to make. I got you. This is Turkish Ramazan for this year. Start off by breaking out a kitchen scale, which we use to weigh all of our ingredients. The first thing we need to weigh is our yeast. This will be responsible for giving our bread rise and it will fill the texture with loads of light and fluffy air bubbles. For our recipe, we'll need 10 grams of dried active or instant yeast. To get the yeast working, we need to bloom in a liquid. You can use water, but I prefer to use milk as it helps to make the dough softer. Measure out 200 grams of milk or water, and then use a thermometer to check its temperature. We want to get this to between 25 to 35 degrees Celsius, as that's the optimal temperature for the yeast. If it's lower, you'll need to let your dough rest for longer, and if it's higher, you can accidentally kill the yeast. I heated my milk in the microwave for 15 seconds until it was just above 35 degrees Celsius. Then I set it aside and broke out a large mixing bowl. Add the milk to your bowl, but beware that a cold bowl will cause the temperature of the milk to drop. Next up, we'll add a little sugar to the milk, which will act as food for the yeast. And don't worry, it won't sweeten the dough. Add one teaspoon to the milk and then pour in the 10 grams of yeast from earlier. Using a whisk, mix the yeast very thoroughly with the milk until most of it has been absorbed and it looks like this. At this point, we can begin adding the flour, and for this recipe, we'll be using regular all-purpose flour, which you can get at any grocery store. Measure out 120 grams of flour, then pour that into the bowl and begin mixing it into the liquid to combine. You want to mix this until no lumps of flour remain, and you have a fairly smooth-looking batter like this. This batter will begin the process of what's called auto-leasing the flour, and it's basically a fancy word for the flour digesting itself. Instead of kneading the bread to form gluten, you'll just give it time to rest and the flour will develop gluten on its own. Cover the bowl with some plastic wrap or a kitchen cloth and then set a timer for 25 minutes and let the bowl rest somewhere warm. While it's resting, let's take a look at these pide that I got from my local Turkish supermarket so we can understand what we're making. They bake this bread off-site and bring them in a couple of times a day so they're always fresh. If you haven't had this bread before, it's really soft and you can practically fold it in half and it will bounce back. It's a traditional bread that's eaten during Ramadan in Turkey, but here they sell it year round. What I'm not a fan of though is that the crumb structure of the bread is really tight, and it can sometimes feel like eating generic white bread. Our recipe on the other hand has an open crumb structure with lots of holes, thanks to the yeast and multiple resting times. It's also extremely soft, so you can fold it just as much as the store's one, but it also holds together better thanks to the skin. I like to cut the bread into quarters and then fill them as sandwiches, and with our recipe, I don't have to worry about it tearing or dissolving. Plus, this one just looks so beautiful. Now, every single kitchen is different, and in my kitchen, after 25 minutes, the batter had tripled in size, and this is what it looked like. You want to extend the resting period for as long as needed until your batter has this foamy and yeasty texture. As you can see, the yeast has formed lots of gas bubbles, and the batter is kind of stringy, which is all of the gluten that formed. We're now going to add the rest of our ingredients, starting with 245 milliliters of water, which you should also heat to 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. Pour that into the batter, then you'll add in 40 grams of olive oil. The fat is optional, but it will keep the bread fresh for longer. Follow the top with the rest of the flour, which is 415 grams of all-purpose flour. And then to season the bread, add one teaspoon of salt. Use a spatula to combine the flour with the liquids, and like I promised, we won't do any kneading at all. You need to mix this until all of the flour has been combined with the liquid, and at first it will be really shaggy and clumpy like this. After about a minute of mixing, the clumps should completely disappear, and if you have a semi-smooth dough like this, you can stop mixing. You'll probably be surprised to know that this is the dough pretty much done, and all we need to do is cover it and then let it rest once more for 25 more minutes. Again, this might take longer in your kitchen, but this auto lease process is the best way to avoid kneading, and so when it looks like this, your dough is ready to be shaped. It will be filled with loads of gas, and you want to keep as much gas trapped in there as possible, so don't mix it. Set the dough aside, then thoroughly clean your worktop, and then sprinkle over loads of flour so the dough doesn't stick. You'll then transfer the dough out of the bowl and onto the worktop, being as gentle and careful as possible so that you don't release the gas. Once it's safely on the worktop, you should sprinkle it with more flour, then kind of just use your hands to get flour onto all of the sides and on the bottom of the dough. Once it's well floured, it will be a lot easier to handle, and you should then roughly shape it into a log. This needs to be cut in half as we're going to make two separate pides, but you could cut this into three if you want them smaller. Each section will be formed into a ball and you can do that by cupping your hands under the dough and then rotating the ball in this manner. Again, be gentle as you don't want to knock out the gas. Once you've formed two dough balls like this, you'll need to prepare a baking tray which the bread will cook on. Lay a piece of parchment paper onto your baking tray and then place the ball of dough in the center. 
Start stretching the dough ball to spread it out by pulling the edges outwards from the middle. Stretch the dough into an oval about 25 to 30 centimeters wide, and you should try to maintain an even thickness all around. Once you have something that looks roughly ovalish and is a little over one centimeter thick and looks kind of like this, give it a dusting of flour and then cover it once more for its final rest. It will need about 20 to 30 minutes more, during which it will puff up for the final time. While we wait, let me show you this Egyptian baladi bread I filmed at a bakery in Cairo a couple of weeks back. The dough is practically a liquid sourdough, and it's rested for about an hour so that the gluten can completely relax. Once shaped, it goes into the oven, then it puffs up into these large pillows. While I'm happy to show you this closely guarded secret, I prefer to keep my personal secrets safe when traveling using Surfshark VPN. I hadn't traveled to Egypt in almost three years, so I spent a lot of time catching up on all of the delicious food, and I even traveled to Alexandria to eat seafood. Being out and about, I had to resort to using public Wi-Fi all the time, but that always comes with the risk of someone stealing your data. So while I was out, I used Surfshark, an app and browser extension which encrypts my data before sending it on the internet. That meant I could do things like access my business bank accounts from anywhere, safe in the knowledge that my internet traffic was kept safe from any malicious attackers. Not only was Surfshark keeping my data safe during the day, but after a traditional Egyptian midnight snack, I could carry on watching the same TV shows I watched back in the UK. That's because I can connect the VPN to any of Surfshark's 3200 servers, and then streaming sites will think I'm watching from there. Goodbye Egyptian Netflix, welcome back UK. So if you are travelling soon and want to keep your data safe, Surfshark have a special offer for my subscribers of 83% off and 3 extra months for free. All you have to do is go to surfshark.deal slash middle eats and there's also a 30 day money back guarantee. That's 83% off plus 3 free months using the code middle eats. Thank you Surfshark. To give our bread a fantastic looking skin, we need to make an egg wash that will glaze the outside. The Turkish style egg wash starts with an egg, which you need to separate the whites from. We only need the yolks, so do what you want with the egg whites. I always give them to my cat as a treat. To the egg yolk, you'll add a tablespoon of water, and then you also add a tablespoon of yogurt. Mix the three ingredients together very well until you have a smooth looking glaze like this. At this point, the bread should be done rising, and we can peel back the plastic to reveal the puffy dough. You want to cover the whole thing in a thin layer of the glaze, and you should do that by brushing it on. Just be gentle when brushing. When it's completely covered like this, you can begin the indentation process, which gives us this lovely design. To do that, you'll push your fingers straight down into the dough, and you'll press them until there is a very thin layer of dough between your fingers and the pan. Just don't tear through it. The first design is a continuous circle of indentations, which should be placed with a 1-2cm gap from the edge of the dough. Once you've formed that, you'll begin making a diagonal line through the centre of the dough, from one corner to the one across from it. You'll then repeat that on either side, making as many evenly spaced lines as you want. I'm going for a baklava like appearance, so I also did more diagonal lines in the other direction, and that left me with this lovely pattern. I then gave this the traditional appearance by sprinkling it with some white sesame seeds, and then I also sprinkled over a load of black nigella seeds. Here's how mine ended up looking. We got clearly defined indentations, loads of the seeds, and it's all nice and puffy. To bake the bread, you need to turn your oven to as hot as it can go and cook the bread until it browns thoroughly on top. Our oven was preheated to 240 degrees Celsius and it took our bread 12 minutes to cook and reach this colour, but you should watch your one as your oven will be different. That was the first batch of bread we baked. We then repeated the recipe, this time adding a baking dish with boiling water to the oven. The baking dish adds steam to the oven and keeps the environment moist, which in turn allows the bread to puff up higher. I found the bread made this way softer skinned and more risen, so I'd recommend you do this. Expect the skin of the bread to be hard when it comes out of the oven, but as it cools down it will become soft and pressable. The base of the bread should be well browned as well, and it should have a good even colour all over. Once it has cooled, feel free to bend and fold it as much as you want, and then store it in an airtight bag for a few days. We decided to have sandwiches as a quick dinner, which is our favourite way to use this bread. I sliced the loaf into quarters, and then sliced each one into an open wedge. We then fried some halloumi cheese into a golden brown, cooked some Turkish sausage until crisp, and made a red onion, parsley and sumac salad. Then I just layered that in there with a little mayo, and it was frankly a brilliant sandwich for all of the 10 minutes that it took to make. Well, ignoring the bread that is. That is a great looking piece of bread. Let's tear into it. Mm. Mm. There is nothing better than homemade bread, so if you're looking for more Middle Eastern bread recipes, click on this video up here.